Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to LoneWolf.com. I'm here in the Aosta Valley in Italy at the Scott Genius launch. And uh, we've been learning about the bike the whole time, uh, taking it for a first ride review, which you'll be able to see in a different video. Um, but during the process, we were shown uh, a lot about how the bikes were constructed and uh, they paid particular attention to detail with the aluminium bike, um, which I thought was really interesting. And hopefully you guys agree. Uh, there's certainly a lot that goes into an aluminium bike. They're not as simple as uh, you may take them for typically. So I think there's nobody better to explain it than Etienne at Scott. He was the lead engineer for the alloy bike and uh, he's gonna give us a run through of all that goes into the aluminium bike. And uh, I hope you guys are gonna be paying attention because this is gonna be super interesting, I think. Hey Tim, hey. what have we got here? So that's the new 2023 new Genius bike in the aluminum version. So we have like carbon for the top of the range and then we have like few hybrid version and several complete aluminum bike as well, depending on the price point. So maybe we can just go through like all the effort and development process we are going through. I mean, I've been working on this one since like three years, so it's quite a lot of time. Absolutely. So, for example, just for like a part like the down tube, which might look quite simple, we start from like 6061 alloy aluminium. So it's an aluminium alloy with like magnesium and silicone as alloying elements. We melt this, we cast it into a mold. Then we get like this billet of alloy. Then we pierce it with a mandrel through a die. We do it different time until the point where we get like this tube. So this is like where we start. So this is like proper diameter and thickness to start with. Then we have like different bending operations. So we don't go straight to hydro forming. We have like a lot of like mechanical operation. Hydro forming. So we just inject a fluid inside and like with a lot of pressure, we give like the final shape to the tube. Then as you can see here and yeah, here for example, we have like different mechanical pressing that are coming like after the reforming for the welds mainly. On this one, I mean, as you have seen on the bike, we have like a big opening to access the shock. So to get this big opening and not compromise like the strength or the rigidity of the bike, we do like a reinforcement weld. Then we grind it so it's flush with the frame, it's invisible. And we cut through it. So as you can see, it's like barely visible. And we still keep like the extra thickness for the reinforcement. It's quite a smart process, so we don't have to thicken like the whole section of tube and like lose a bit, I mean, gain a bit, a lot of weight actually. Then we have like few force parts with like machining operation. So those are the trillion mount, for example, with like the cable routing. And this is a base of the fixation for the cover of the shock. So we have like grazing operation, so this is like all the cup is ending up on the down tube. You can see also like the trillion mount. We have like riveting operation for the bottom cage and then we do like the final cut. One down tube. Yeah, exactly. So as you can see, it's quite a lot of operation and it's not even over yet. Then we still have to weld it. We have to perform like heat treatment on the frame to get rid of like all the stress induced by the weld. Um, we still have to do like final machining, like for example, for the trillion mount. We do it after welding to make sure like everything is like perfectly aligned. And then what do, what do we end up with? Yeah. I mean, I explain you like this part. As you can see, there is like many more parts and we have to go through all the process of like all the different parts. So what I did explain you is like quite a classic process for a tube. This is like a six step, for example. What you have to imagine now is like, we have to do this for like every kind of part we have like forge parts with like a lot of machining operation, as you can see. We have like different kind of parts. And overall, just for one size, so this is like the medium size, we have to produce like 30 different parts through like 25 different processes. So it's quite a lot of work, even if it's like the entry price model. Yeah. It's still a It's still model. not just a off the shelf job, that's for yeah, sure. Exactly, yeah. And I mean, here we have a nice cut frame it's quite a cool one. You can really see like all the optimization that we are doing 
I haven't talked about like the butting, but like you can see it like really well here. So it's like triple butting. So we have like three different wall thickness. So if you look like, for example, it's quite thick, like near the head tube when we like rigidity and strength. And in the middle, while it's like not so useful to be like super strong, we can save a bit of material to reduce the weight. And as you can see, we're going like, we're way thinner here than the structural area near the BB or the headset, for example. And that is the same for all the tubes? Exactly, it's the same for like every tube. I mean, it's a bit difficult to see on camera, I guess, but like on the chain stay, seat stay, you cannot, I mean, you can see it like, you can see like the thickness difference in between like the top, the middle, and like the, the end of the tube. We are using a lot of FEA, so finite element uh, analysis, to define exactly what do we need in which area to get something which is like matching our requirement in terms of like weight, strength, rigidity, look, everything. Another thing that I think was quite interesting was on the main link. So we had to engineer like a new spline construction, like it's completely different from the Spark. I mean, obviously it's like bigger loads. I mean, as you have seen the geometry and like the kinematic, the bike got a bit beefier than the previous generation. So we need to handle like all the abuse. So we had to engineer like a new spline construction. And um, yeah, while well, keep thinking about like the maintenance of the bike and to make sure like everything is easy to service. And, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, I think we've got something else a bit historic that's quite interesting. Yeah, something quite funny. I just learned yesterday, actually. I mean, I'll just go back to the table and take this big seat tube. So that's a seat tube before like cutting operation. So exactly this part you can see before to be like assembled, I mean, welded with like the seat tube pivot and stuff like this. So it's quite a, it's quite a tough one it's to a, get. Like, it's a big part as well. It's a big part, yeah. And Huge like, amount of volume in there yeah, to, uh, yeah, to yeah. let the shock it fit a, in. It was a tricky one to produce. Um, I think it's quite funny because like over there, we have like the 2001 Genius, which is like the very first Genius that we produce. And fun fact, it's the very first bike, bike to have like a hydroform tube. This one, so this seat tube is hydroform. And yeah. It was the first time we ever had like a hydroform tube on like any bike on the market. And yeah, I think it's quite... How, how far things have come, exactly huh? Exactly, like 20 years of like pushing, pushing processes and stuff like this. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much. I uh, certainly found that very interesting for myself. Um, and I hope you guys found it interesting too. If you've enjoyed the video, give us a like, leave a comment, let us know what your favorite part of the bike is, or uh, if it was too much for you, I don't know. Uh, I'd, I'd certainly think it was enjoyable. And uh, subscribe to the channel, to see more awesome content on awesomely engineered bikes like this. Thank you very much for tuning in guys. Hope to catch you out on the trails.